he sometimes fills in for himself. He's Andrew Wilkow. You know what's funny about the audience of this program is that I will get a tidal wave of requests to book somebody that I've already booked. So we've been getting a slew of emails and social media postings asking when we're going to book Omar Navarro. And I've had to reply. He's already booked. We just it's just, you know, when his window opens up to join us on the program. But I love the fact that the audience was requesting somebody that we had already booked and in mass joining us on the program for the first time running against Maxine Waters in California's 33rd, uh, 43rd district. Omar Navarro, how you doing? Good. How you doing? How's everything? Thank you for having me on the show. No, no problem. So you're like 28 years old. Am I right? Yes, I'm 28 years old. So you're you're pretty. This is you're pretty young to be taking on a venerable member of the House of Representatives, Maxine Waters. Well, no one else has the balls to do it, so I'm doing it. So, but but why at the age of 28? Because I know you're running as a constitutional conservative. Do they even have those in California anymore? You know, uh, there's a lot of them um, that are out there, but a lot of them are scared to to voice themselves. And since uh, the last election, the presidential election, a lot of people started coming out, and a lot of young people, which is uh, which is a turnaround. I, you know, I lost hope years ago with, with the younger generations, the millennial generations, because I'm a part of the millennial generation. Um, and I, when I started seeing him come out, I was like, wow, I'm like, I'm, I'm shocked and I'm amazed by it. And not only that, I was able to build connections with a lot of young people. Uh, sometimes at our, our events, we have over 200 people that show up and only it was it, over 90% of them are millennials. 90%. Uh, that is amazing. I, we are changing the state of California because these, uh, liberal policies don't have common sense pol- uh, uh, solutions. Oh, for hold, business, hold on so. a second. Navarro. It sounds like a Hispanic last name. Aren't you supposed to be a liberal Democrat who believes in big government, that all things come from government, all things to the government? Isn't that what you're supposed to think? Well, that's that's what liberals have have uh, imprinted in people's minds, that if you're Hispanic, you're Latino, that you cannot be a Republican. And, and that is that is that is just wrong that you, and not only that, you can't even support the president of the United States. Uh, that is that is the wrong message we're sending out to everybody. There's all Latinos out there that are just tired of Democrats running the state of California down, and they're waking up, and they're realizing things. It's happening here in the 43rd Congressional District. I don't know about everywhere else in California, but people are waking up here. And not only that, there's a 14% registration of Republicans, but last time I ran, I got over 30% of the vote, and I spent $0.25 cents a vote, and she spent $25 a vote. And this time around, I've raised much more, 10 times more than last time, so I know my message is going to go out there, and people are going to listen, and people have been listening. I, my volunteer base has grown substantially, which I'm very happy about. Well, OmarNavarro.com is the website. Hopefully you raised some money by being on this program because there's a donate link there at OmarNavarro.com. Uh, one more question about, about demographics, then we'll get into your, your particular pledges and platforms here on your website. Yeah. I, this is one thing I've never understood about the air fingers quote Hispanic vote. The, anyone whose family came here. Now, I realize, I mean, there are third, fourth, fifth, there there are Hispanic voters who, you know, don't remember, you know, don't know anyone that came from the from the country that, where their great, great, great grandparents have come from. I understand that. But for so many mm-hmm. that who are the first or second generation, this is what I don't get. If your family fled Central America or South America or Mexico, what about those governments? What about their structures, their their taxes, the way they run law enforcement or education do you want to bring here? Because I don't see that big of a separation between the American Democratic Party and Nicolas Maduro's Socialist Party in Venezuela. And it takes about 20 years for that to happen, you know, when you have total control by the socialists. I want to know, to, I want to ask these voters without being accused of any, you know, you hate this group or that group, what is it about those nations? that you want to bring here? Because if your family came here, they wanted to get away from that system of government. You there? Yeah, you know, you know okay. th- that, that's, that's the mistake that a lot of people, you know, have in prison in their own mind. You have people that come here and, and from different countries that, that want to bring a third world mentality into the United States. And the United States is the exception of every other country. We are a country that you can achieve anything. You can achieve great success. You have the Second Amendment. 
I mean, we, we can even protect ourselves against our own government. But people don't understand the Constitution. When, when they come here illegally, they're not coming here respecting the laws in our country. They're coming in disrespecting the laws. And that is a big issue. That, there's a separation of between legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. Legal immigrants went through a process. They respected the law. Illegal immigrants broke the law. Now, let me go through some of your policies here. I like some of the ones that jump out at me. You believe in local control of public education. You write control of public education will be given back to the parents, teachers, and school leaders. As this happens, the federal government's involvement will become limited. I like that. I like the fact that you stand up for the Second Amendment here. You, you're pro-life, um, and uh, you want to build up the military. These are and lower taxes. These are all these are all rock bottom important issues, especially for conservatives and Republicans. And quite frankly, what has Maxine Waters really ever accomplished? Well, if you look around the district like I have, and I live in it, you know, I live in Torrance, California. I was born in Inglewood, and I was raised a portion of my life in Hawthorne. Um, yeah, if, if, if you're from around here, you know what kind of poverty is around in the community. Not only that, you go to parks, you see a bunch of gangbangers in lower-income communities in the district. And that is saddening. These people that live there, do they really want to see a gangbanger in their park where they're going to take their kid at? No, they're not. They're going to want to go to a better community. And they're going to have to leave the city they live in to go to a better park where it's safer. And that, that's a big issue. We need to make sure that we're protecting young kids. I mean, I, you know, my, my heart is I want to protect families. I want to bring back family values to the 43rd Congress. Oh, there District. you go. Family values, you Republican, you. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Um, no, no, no. But that, that's we, we have to do that. I mean, it's really important. Family is really important. Family is really important within the Hispanic and the Latino community. Uh, it, and it's important in every other culture. I mean, so people need to really figure that out. That is important. Because if we're not we're not instilling kids with a mentality of thinking right, they're going to grow up doing nothing in life. They're not going to produce anything in society. We have to make sure we're influencing young kids' lives, and we're being we're making sure they're being productive in society. So you're 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 a small business owner. Um, what what you know? Do you, do you see a risk in? Are you giving up your business to run? I mean, because that's you know, it, it it's funny. Well, most of our... I already have. Oh, I, you have. I, I I already have in a sense because you know I haven't been, I haven't been doing that much. I haven't been practicing the my business that much anymore. I, I do online marketing. Everything that I've been doing is towards the campaign. Uh, I made that my main focus, and even my campaign manager said, "I like how you're focusing all, all, only on this, and that's all you're doing." I told him, I was like, the only way to beat Maxine Waters is to put in 100% of myself into this and give my all of myself into it. And when people tell me, hey, it, how are you going to uh, take the Democratic stronghold in the 43rd? Well, I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to go out there. And not only that, my base of people have grown substantially. I have never seen anybody in the 43rd Congressional District build a campaign like I have. And not only that, pick up national attention like I've been getting. So that that is an amazing thing. Now, are you getting are you getting hit from you know are you getting hit as a sellout? Uh, you know, some of the name calling is Maxine. Well, I get, I get a lot of name calls. I get uh, they call me a white supremacist. Oh, well, uh, they obviously, call me a, 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 a they call me what did they call me last time a wetback. Um, and and, and uh, that, so I mean, I get called all these names. I get put, posted on Antifa forums. You know, Antifa that the, yeah yeah the communist fascist organization. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they, they do a lot of things like this. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm running because I want to represent Americans. I'm running because I want to represent my district. I want to change my district for the better, making sure that we're getting jobs back to California, making sure that we're sustaining business in the state of California. We're keeping those businesses here. Because people don't talk about sustaining business, yet they talk about bringing more business, but they don't talk about sustaining the business we have. We right. have to business first the the website's omarnavarro.com he's running in 40 the 43rd congressional district that's maxine waters um have you has has your campaign and her campaign agreed to a series of debates or is she just going to pretend you don't exist well uh, you know I'll, I'll say this right now you know we have uh made a, many approaches asking uh maxine waters for organized de debate and they have rejected uh, every uh chance of, of debating us from, from now, from right now. Hopefully, uh, we'll get something next year. I'm not sure, but we've been asking. Uh, we just, we would just want. I did my announcement in front of Maxine Waters' house last Monday. 
uh, with with a mariachi band. Uh, it was quite interesting. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! You took a you took a mariachi band to Maxine Waters' house? Yeah, like, like... yeah, and, and with, with over fifty supporters there. Uh, so it, it was it was quite interesting. It was it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mariachi band. All right. Well, you know, I I hope her campaign, and I think your supporters should make that part of the campaign that she should have to face you in a debate over you know how good Obamacare is working, right? Or how good uh, high tax policies have been working, even in the state of California. I mean, I'm looking at your platform here. Like I said, it's it's it, it's all you know, all stuff we agree with, all conservatives. It, it's all good stuff. Um. She should have to face you in a debate and explain why she deserves another term uh, out of the forty third. Because, like you said, you're twenty eight years old. Uh, it's time for it's definitely time for new blood in, in in the House of Representatives, and it's time to push out some of these liberal Democrats. And I, I'm really hoping you can you can be successful here. Thank you so much. And remember, I, I'm a real millennial. Well, it's good to know that there are some millennials that are running as. A constitutionalist. Let me Not ask only you that piece. Maxine considers herself a millennial. So, <laughs> well, MTV did so. put they, they they called her anti Maxine. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, um, no, but she said it on a speech that she called herself a, a millennial. She says, "I'm a millennial." Well, she also <laughs> she also wants to socialize the oil industry. Um, yeah, she likes doing that. All right, guys. Uh, OmarNavarro dot com. There's a donate link right there. Um, got a guy running against Maxine Waters. You got thirty percent last time. Yeah, uh, close to 30% of the vote last time, and I spent less than 25 cents a vote. She spent $25 a vote. So it was a question of fundraising last time around, but this time, I mean, n that's not the case. It's not this time. All right, well, we'll have to get you back on the program. We're going to have to do this more than once with you. OmarNavarro.com. Omar, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Wyant 695 patriot 957 So there you got, you know, a young conservative, millennial conservative, who has put his business aside, stepped up to the plate, and says, I'm going to run against Maxine Waters. They got 30% last time. That's, pr that's pretty darn good. That's going to take the Republican Party getting behind him. That's going to take people showing up. That's going to take people you know, going to the polls. It's going to take people you know, giving money to campaigns like this. Wine 695 patriot 957-2874. Like I always say, I can't. I I don't. I don't know what it means to be of a minority status and be a conservative, because it seems like black and Hispanic conservatives get treated way worse than me, because they expect it from me. And my question always is, and it's an honest question, to anyone whose family came here legally from Mexico, or any of the Central American countries, or Venezuela or any of the other South American countries, minus maybe Colombia, what is it about those governments that you want to import? Because it, se it seems like the more we leave the border open, the more we get Democrat voters. The Democrats know that what they're dealing with with undocumented immigrants is undocumented Democrats. So my question is, while the Democratic Party sort of demands an unquestionable loyalty from Hispanic voters, I want to know what it is about these policies that you like, because if your family came here, if your family made the choice to leave wherever it was, it meant your family didn't want to be a part of that anymore. And that's not to say you have to leave everything behind, every aspect of your culture, whether it's food or music or, or whatever. It's about government. My question is, what is it about a ubiquitous big government that you want more of. If you left Venezuela, tell me why you would vote for Democrats here. If your family is from Cuba, why would you vote for Democrats here? It's an honest to God question. I just, I, I don't get it. Unless it's, unless it's, uh, you've been led to believe, oh, over there in the Republicans, they don't like you because you might have dark skin. Yep, Okay. That's not true. That's never been true. This myth that the Republican Party is full of white nationalists, go to CPAC. Go to any conservative event. You'll see a diverse crowd. Second hour next. Eli Crane 
from BottleBreacher.com is going to join us. I have one on my desk. Sirius XM Patriot.